Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video, I'm finally going over my thoughts on the retail version of The Long Dark. Now, longtime viewers of the channel may remember I reviewed the early access portion of this game last year, and much of that review still holds up. In today's video, I'm going to be covering the new story mode, Wintermute. If you haven't seen anything on The Long Dark before, it's essentially an open world wilderness survival resource management game, scavenging for food and water, Finding shelter and surviving brutal winter conditions are the main elements at play. Again, for the main survival free play mode, my old review still holds up, so if you want the basics of the survival mode, watch it. Sadly, because of my work schedule, I just don't have time to recap the entire game. The interface has been updated, there are a couple new gameplay elements, and some of the maps seem to have been updated, but for the most part, the game is still the same at its core. So on to the story mode. Wintermute begins after a plane crash. You, the player character, William McKenzie, is injured and must immediately seek shelter from a blizzard. Stuck in a ravine with only plain debris to survive on, you must learn the basics of first aid, fire making, hydration, and hunger. Soon you will find a mysterious package your ex-wife Astrid was trying to deliver to a remote location in northern Canada. This starts a cutscene, providing us with the long-awaited story, and honestly, it's underwhelming. Sure, the creators got big-named voice talent in Jennifer Hale and Mark Meir, both of whom played Commander Shepard in the Mass Effect series, and they certainly do a good job, but the writing left something to be desired. It's not that it's bad, it's just vague, and maybe a bit cliched. I would post a spoiler warning, but the story so far seems to have very little substance. We know that William and Astrid used to be married, and that they haven't seen each other since, oh, you know, that thing that happened. It's been a while, I know. Yeah. Years. I haven't heard from you since... I know. I know. Astrid tracked down William because she needs a pilot that won't ask questions. And obviously her ex-husband is the only one she can trust. So after William agrees to the flight, we get some more vague dialogue related to their relationship and William's apparent alcohol issues. But then we are interrupted by the mysterious geological event that took down the plane. Currently, the main goal of the player character is to be reunited with Astrid, who disappeared during the crash. You start the game stuck in a remote location in northern Canada. This area is brand new, and I'll admit it was refreshing to see a new location. The bulk of the first episode is learning the very basics of survival by assisting an old woman, the last of her town, to have enough food and water to survive. The quest with Greymother, as she calls herself, isn't bad, but for longtime players it's tedious. And though her story is decent, it has no connection to your story at all. There is a trust mechanic that allows you to give items to NPCs like Greymother, which will in turn provide you with more information about the world in the event that brought down your plane, but the required items and time just don't seem to be worth it in a game about your own survival. Wintermute's cutscenes are voice acted for the most part. However, at certain points, all dialogue is done in text menus, which feels cheap. The visuals of the cutscenes, however, are better than I expected from a developer of this size. They released a story mode trailer about a year ago, and I never expected the visual style to hold up in engine. Your character and all the characters of the world have this sort of splotchy texture style that reminds me of a painting. It creates a very distinct look for each character without removing you from the already established art style. Episode 2 of Wintermute moves us beyond the confines of the tutorial zone, and back into the familiar Mystery Lake location. In this episode, you assist another random NPC, Jeremiah the Trapper, regain his health after a bear attack. Again, for a longtime player, this is all par for the course, and survival is just about as difficult as it always has been. From my experience, it does seem wolves attack more often and track you for longer periods of time, which is annoying, but without the permadeath of the free mode, I understand that they had to throw in some extra difficulty. However disconnected to the story I feel, I will say Episode 2 provides some decent challenge in traversing through brutal areas we haven't seen before. I think the travel required is a great way to set up the game's focus on inventory management and survival planning. I even got a little overzealous and ended up dying several times trying to make it to a certain location. And even when I got there, the supplies provided were limited. So as always, the game doesn't hold your hand every step of the way. It makes you pave your own path. Overall, the gameplay of Wintermute is about what I expected it would be. I think wolf locations are a bit convenient, and the progression of obtaining certain items is frustrating for an experienced player, 
but for someone new to the game, it provides challenges that ease you into the harsh difficulty of the game. I would certainly recommend this mode to anyone new to the Long Dark. So in conclusion, Wintermute is an odd game mode. It places us back into a world we've already seen, just with some cosmetic changes. I always felt like the story mode should be something that provides us with the motivation to survive, and as of now with what has been released, I feel very little towards the characters. The plot is vague and our protagonists are underdeveloped. We know one is a pilot with a drinking problem, and the other is a doctor on a secret mission, possibly to do with some weird eco-terrorists. I don't know. If playing Wintermute is your first time playing The Long Dark, then I think it's a decent introduction to the mechanics, but for a long time player it feels like a chore. So far quests have only consisted of fetching items for NPCs and relearning all the mechanics you already know. I hope that when the next three episodes arrive, the goals become more interesting, and I hope the story develops into something worth playing, but so far I'm kind of unimpressed. However, considering the second episode's better NPCs and mysterious ending, the story mode may still have some tricks up its sleeve, but for now, we'll just have to wait. Okay everybody, that was my video for this week. I hoped you liked it. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. Uh, got something to say, leave a comment in the comments section. And as always, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this one in the future. Uh, sorry about the lack of updates recently. My work schedule has been crazy and I simply have not had enough time for videos. However, my schedule should be back to normal soon, so hopefully I'll get back to my weekly releases. Uh, I guess that's about it. If you want to get in touch with me directly, you can follow me on Twitter. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can head over to my Patreon page. And as always, thanks for watching.